Hey guys, today we're going to go over a little bit more dynamic adaptions of a plank. In our previous video, we did a basic and a little more advanced version of a plank. All of them are still doing the same thing. We're looking at good core stability. You want to get a nice stiff core, good engagement. If you are a little unfamiliar how to do that, highly recommend going to the wall bug video, getting an idea of how to engage your core before you do something like this. Let's dive in. Good plank, arms are underneath the shoulders. I want my fingers spread nice and wide and fingers long. This protects your wrist. You're on the outside of your wrist, it's just gonna hurt. You want the weight on the inside, fingers nice and long. We come here under our plank, and like I said, I always like to use a yoga block. This keeps me from cheating. And then if you wanna get a little more dynamic, oh, lost it. Like I said, keeps you from cheating. Come in here. Nice and tall. And this is kind of combining a beast crawl with a plank. I'm moving one hand at a time, followed by a leg. And you can go back. Really good core engagement as you learn how to disassociate the quadrants of your limbs. You disassociate a hip from your core stability. Very tricky, nice little change from a plank. Continuing on that trend, same thing. I have a kettlebell here. Get into your plank. Again, fingers nice and long and tall. And then all you're gonna do is just drag the kettlebell, bring it around. Other side, drag, bring it around. drag and bring it around. That right there is one of my absolute favorite core stability exercises because you're introducing a high rotational force while maintaining your stiffness. This stability is excellent in terms of power generation, especially if you're in a sport that involves swing or any sport that tries to change rotational forces into a sagittal plane, get some good power out of it.